In a previous video, we discussed Will City, and that's a new directory theme that has come to Theme Forest, and I've been using it for a little bit, and it's been going great. I'll leave a link down in the description for that video, as well as the link to purchase Will City. It's $59 on Theme Forest, and there's so much that you get with it. The WordPress theme, the iOS and Android applications all come with it for free, and a ton of different things that you can do with this. So we'll go ahead, and we're going to dive right into this. So this is how uh, we're going to go through installing the Will City theme. We're going to Appearance and Themes, Add New, Upload Theme, and we're going to click and drag the installable file here. Now this is over 10 megabytes, and if your hosting does not allow you to upload over 10 megabytes, then you will have to make that exclusion inside of your PHP or your configuration settings to allow that. I am running on a local install, so. I don't have any issues right now. After that, we're going to click activate and we're already installed the theme. So now we just need to install the required plugins to make this theme run. So let's click begin installing plugins. Now I'm going to go ahead and check all these and all of the ones that say required, you're going to need to have those. The ones that I say recommend, let's go through those uh, one by one. Elementor is a page builder. King Composer is a page builder and Visual Composer as Page Builder. Basically, uh, you need to have King Composer, so definitely keep this one checked off. Uh, I'm gonna be using Elementor as my Page Builder, so I'm going to uncheck Visual Composer, and I'm going to uncheck Will City WP Bakery add-on, which is Visual Composer. If you're going to be building the mobile app with this, then I would suggest keeping this checked for now. You can always go back later and, and install it. Uh, the Will City Import, if you wanna import their demo content, Go ahead and keep that checked. I don't want to do that, so let's go ahead and uncheck that. And if you want to have paid claims, then you keep that checked. I'm going to go ahead and keep that checked. Let's install and click apply. All right, we've gone ahead and installed all these plugins. Let's go back down to the bottom and go to the return to required plugins installer. From there, we're going to click to activate at the top, and we're going to select all and activate them. All right, we're gone and we've successfully done that. If you need to go back and install or any of the plugins, you can go to install plugins under appearance. So let's refresh our dashboard. All right, once we do that, we are going to be prompted with a lot of different sidebar options. And we're gonna cover these one by one in a lot of different, uh, in a couple different videos that we're gonna do in the future. But most of your settings are gonna be under appearance in the Willow tools right up top. So we're gonna go over just configuring some basic theme options under appearance, theme options. So we have our general settings. We can upload our favicon right here if we want to. We have different logos and retina logos that we can upload. We have the listing logo. So basically this is the default listing logo. If somebody does not upload a logo, then this one will be used. You can use um, like a upload logo here graphic or you can use your, your company logo, whatever you want to do there. You have the menu logo, the, me the menu color. So this is the color of the text of the menu on the front end. And then we have the author menu background. These are all the different backgrounds for the menu, basically. So we have the author menu background, which is transparent, the listing details menu background, which is transparent, and the main menu background, which is dark. So the listing details, which is going to be the single listing items, they're gonna be transparent. You can leave this whatever you want it to do. You can choose transparent, dark, light, custom. So it can actually be custom color here. And then of course we have the author menu but background, which is basically the people who are listing the profiles. Uh, if you want that to be there, whatever color you want that to be. You can keep these all the same if you want to. Uh, you can actually change these on a per page basis in the page settings as well. Um, so it really doesn't matter too much. These are just going to be the default. Uh, for them, most of them, I have this transparent, transparent, and then menu background, I have this as uh, like a white color. So that's usually what I have for my settings, unless I want the menu to be like a black or something like that. The toggle follow feature, this allows the uh, contributors or search subscribers who are registered on your site to follow the listing owners. And then of course we have a couple options for always show full text. So basically it won't shorten the text, it'll just keep it long. 
Underneath the front end dashboard, uh, just a little profile section saying, hey, we don't share or sell your details without your permission. You don't have to have this here if you don't want to. You can get rid of it or you can keep it and just put your privacy policy here. A little bit of a, a little welcome message when they log into their profile. Register and log in. So if you want people to be able to register on your site, make sure this is enabled. The toggle agreed to po privacy policy. So when they register for the site, do you want them to agree to the privacy policy? And if you do, here's a text and you can link it right to your policy right here. The terms and conditions, the same thing if you want to enable that for when they register. And of course your description there. Login redirect type. So when they log in, uh, will it refresh the same page that they're on or do you want to specify a page such as their dashboard or something along those lines? Do you want to be able to confirm user email address? So if they register on a site, it will send them a link to their site, to their email, I'm sorry, and it'll say, hey, just one more step, don't forget to confirm your email address before you can log in, enable or disable that. And then redirect to this page after creating an account. So if you want to redirect them to their dashboard, you can choose that here. Or if you want to redirect them to the home page, you can do that here. The internal welcome message, basically it sends them a message on the internal inbox system once they join their initial join, you could just go ahead and put something here if you want to. And then a front end password reset, uh, if you want them to be able to do that, you can have this right here as well. For the users, uh, default cover image, avatar, and to toggle follow feature. Basically, uh, for subscribers who are subscribing to the site, you can do the same thing as a listing. So if you have the default cover image, if they don't put one, default user avatar, which I usually just do like a logo or something, and then toggle follow feature if you want to enable or disable that to be able to follow people. Kind of like a buddy press option. The custom customized taxonomies, I have not messed with any of these options because they're all good for me, but you can go ahead and change these settings here for the listing tags and listing location and slug for the category. Just make sure you go to settings and permalinks over here on the bottom left and go ahead and hit save once you do that. Then you have some options down here. So the subcategory settings, number of columns for listing location. So this is gonna be important. So maybe set that to like two or three if you have um, a lot of different categories and then the maximum amount. And then you can order by the subcategories. You can order by number of children. You can order by um, the term name, things of that nature. So you can always do something like that. And of course the subcategories. For the toggle show some listings belongs as a category, then you can enable or disable that. And as well as the listing titles, you can go ahead and enable or disable. Um, you're gonna go ahead and type in the, t the text there if you want to. There's a lot of different options right here. So you can do uh, the listing order, you can do listing by title, something like that, or order, and then ascending and descending, which is most likely how I'm gonna have most of my sites. Your Google Maps settings, so you make sure you enter your Google Map API key here. Uh, I have left the Google language blank, but you can go ahead and find one here. The maximum zoom level and the minimum zoom level, you can keep those the same. Default zoom level for the map, this is the map. So you wanna keep this pretty far out. So I'm saying like maybe 10. You don't wanna keep it out so it serves the entire country. Uh, enable map bound feature, you can enable or disable. I have mine currently disabled. Um, but it is good for local businesses, so if you want to enable that, if you're doing there, and then you can enable some starting for if you have a spot where a lot of your local businesses are located. So the single listing page, you can control the zoom levels here. Uh, the default zoom level, you're going to want around 16 or so here default, so it just shows like the surrounding streets, and the same here. Directory types. So we have different directory types here. The overlay color, the post per page, we can do that. Um, we have the excerpt length and the featured image. So if the featured image is emptied, then this will be used. If the video doesn't come from YouTube or Vimeo, because you can upload videos to your listings, you can use this thumbnail as a default. Uh, the time format, whichever one you want, 12 hour military. The map pages, so once you create your pages, you'll enter your map in your search page here. And then your favorite feature. So if you want people to be able to bookmark listings, you can enable or disable this here. 
the business hours. So you can actually set default opening and closing hours if you want to. Uh, I just have it blank because a lot of different businesses have a lot of different closing times. Maybe if you were working with all banks and you know that all banks are like nine to five or something like that, then you can go ahead and do the default opening and closed hours. Uh, add listing general settings. So uh, if you disable some settings on the listing plans, and that's over here on the left hand side, and we'll get that to that in a later video, then you can actually show them on the listing page, but they'll be grayed out and people can't check them, or it just won't show at all if you choose this option. And that's probably the option I would suggest because people are gonna get confused and think your website's broken if you have this option checked. Google AdSense, so if you do have a Google AdSense account, you can add ads right onto your site and then you have different options for above, below, and do not show. Your blog, just excerpt length. Sidebars, if you wanna have sidebars, so you can go ahead and choose which position you want those in. The social networks, so if you wanna exclude social networks, then you can go ahead and add the social networking separated by comma if you want to disable them. And of course we have all of these down here that you can add. The 404, if you want to add the, uh, in background, you can customize your 404 page. You can do the heading and then of course our description. The footer options, so you can choose the amount of footer items here. And then of course your copyright and then all of your items will be underneath of appearance widgets, and then you've got your footers over here on the right-hand side. Customize URL, if you want to add the parent location, you can do that, you can enable that. And then of course you can do your uh, permalink settings if you wanna change them here for your single listings so that you can just go here and they have a whole uh, directory for doing like listing locations so that you can have custom listing locations um, that way it's better for SEO. Your advanced settings, so if you're using different Google fonts, make sure you add them under custom. You can add them with the Google font link here. And then of course, example for font family, make sure you add it here so that it recognizes it. The theme color is going to be basically all of the different colors for your theme. If you go to the demo, you see that there's a lot of pink here. If you change the color, then all of that will change to a different color. So if you want red, you can do that. Save, and if we refresh, we have that red color here. This also is gonna be your default color uh, if you are building an app. So make sure that your theme color here and then in your app settings, they are the same because it will pull from both. And we'll get to that in a later video as well. Mobile settings, so if you are gonna build the app, you can do the above sidebar or below sidebar for all of your single content position. Email contents, so for all the emails that get sent out via the directory, you can go ahead and just have everything here. So put your brand here and then it will automatically fill it in wherever you put the, the tag right here. So you have all of these options to do all of this. The Options, object, you don't need to worry about that. And import, export. If you want to go ahead and import, export some of your settings, you can do that as well. That pretty much covers the entire theme options. We will go over a lot of different functionality later on in a couple of other videos. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.